Well, hey there, grammar fan. Let's go ahead and continue the fun. I jot down this week's first sentence, mistakes and all. Then you'll hit pause on me, make your corrections, hit play, where you and I will catch up again on the answer key slide. All right, first up this week. Her car, now a broken heap on the side of the road, was in excellent condition when she bought it. Failure to regularly change the oil lead to engine problems. Oh, indeed. You got to take care of your tools. All right, go ahead and hit pause, make your corrections, and then I'll be waiting here with the answers. All right, you could probably hear the non-essential element as I was reading the sentence to you. So let's start here. Uh, We're going to take commas. Actually, I'm just going to underline here. This is your non-essential information. And you know by now that you separate those off with commas when you see them floating in the middle of an independent clause, like I have it right here. Now a broken heap on the side of the road is extra information. It is not needed for the main independent clause to make sense. The main independent clause is her car was in excellent condition when she bought it. Okay, so that's the main idea, but whenever you add in an extra information like that in the middle of the sentence, you're going to separate it off with commas. Um, I have a comma splice here. I have tried and failed to link two complete thoughts, two independent clauses with just a comma, and y'all know by now that is a no-go around here. That is creating a run-on sentence, a special one called a comma splice. This time around, I've decided to break it into two. I put a period after it, capitalize the F in failure. Because I don't, I don't feel like the second sentence is so closely aligned to the first that I need the semicolon here. You could do a semicolon there. You could do a long dash if like you're her parent and you want to scold her, you know, and you want to make it super drama. But I didn't need to do all that. I just went ahead and made it two separate sentences. Um, and then the word is lead, not lead. Um, I tried to say it. I think I, I caught it awkwardly when I was reading the sentence to you, uh, but it's, uh, it's misspelled. Uh, uh, failure to regularly change the oil led to engine, the engine problems. And we know that because we have this um, past tense happening. Okay, so we're good there. Looking good. Next sentence for this week. According to most manufacturers, a driver should change the oil in their cars every 3,000 miles. However, many people wait much longer among service appointments, uh, including my husband. He's like, let's just wait till 5,000 miles. Modern engines don't need changing as much. He's got this whole like lecture thing. I hear it, <laughs> I hear it every few months. All right, go ahead and hit pause. Make your corrections and then... And let's talk about the answers when you're ready. All right. We need this comma right here for our opening introductory element to separate it off from the main uh, independent clause. Uh, drivers should change their oil in their cars every 3,000 miles. That's your independent clause. Um, and I changed it to drivers. Um, I went plural because before we had singular, a driver, a driver, driver, but we had there, which was the plural pronoun. So I don't like that disagreement in this case. And so I'm going to go ahead and just make the uh, first one plural also by taking out a strike this guy and then just make drivers plural which then matches the plural of there and then happiness reigns across the land um this is sort of a style thing for me i use the comma to separate large numbers so in the placeholder so three you know comma zero 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 for three thousand now this time i have fixed a run-on sentence in a different way This is the same pattern problem that we had in the last sentence in that it is a run-on sentence because it's joining two complete thoughts incorrectly. On the last slide, I had a comma splice because I just used a comma. This time, I just have a run-on because I've used nothing and I've just kept on going. Um, Lots of ways to fix this. I've chosen the semicolon here, but you could do other things. You could do a period after miles, capitalize the H and however, and you're good to go. Um, with a little rewriting, you also could use a comma and a fanboy. You know, it's really up to you as the writer how you want to do it. But because of this, however, right here, I feel like, okay, semicolon is the right move. And then we need the comma after the ho- however, because however is an introductory element. It's separating it off from the main independent clause of the second sentence here or the second part of the sentence. So there we're good. Wow. I got a little messy there. All right, let me get rid of some of that. That's, that's a traffic jam right there. Okay. However, comma, many people wait much longer among service appointments. No, between, uh, among is for three or more, um, like among a group of friends, but between the friends, would be two. Um, And then service appointments was misspelled to make sure you fix that one. 
Okay, that is it for your Monday mugshot. I hope this is helpful. If you're enjoying the series, go ahead and hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, do all the things. Uh, definitely come back Wednesday though, no matter what, because I'm gonna go deep on three high level SAT type words. And then Fridays, I'm always here with a little surprise, a little drop of high school English skill builder. I hope you're having a great, great Monday so far and that you're ready to roll for a fantastic week. I will see you on Wednesday. Keep being awesome. Bye.